my name is Amal Kaysen. Hello, Banhu, Bakwabo, Midimale, Omokesuba, Kaysen. If you are new to this channel, please do want to subscribe if you like the content. And in today's video, we are going to be doing our first Zima lessons. And I am going to be teaching you this Zima through stories. Yay! Right, so some of the lessons I might teach you through poems, rhymes, history, etc. But today's video, I am teaching you through a story, storybooks. <laughs> right, so the title of our story today is Ewuke Balenu. I know, I know, it sounds like gibberish in your mind right now, but trust me, I'm going to make sure this lesson is as simple as possible and it's easy for you to understand, okay? Ah. So let's go again. Ewuke Balenu. Ewuke, Ewuke, Ewuke. That's right, I get in it. Bale, bale, nu, nu. That's very easy. Nu. <laughs> so, ewuke simply means a compound, right? Compound, like you know, you have a house and a compound. In the olden days, they didn't have like self contained houses or they didn't have like estates. It was mostly compound houses. So, ewuke, right? Pale means good or neat or like if you say something is pale, it means something is good or like pale, it is good, right? So nu means in, right? So it will keep pale nu. If I'm to translate it directly into English, I would say compound good in, right? Doesn't make any sense at all, right? But if I'm to translate it to make sense, I'll simply say in a good compound, right? But for the direct translation, you say compound good in. <laughs> so let's get straight to the story. This is what we have here. Can you guys let me know what you can tell from the story? If you would ask me, it looks like a boy and a girl holding what looks like a mango or oranges, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how the enzymes describe this photo here. Right. So it says, Kofi. I hope you guys can see this so we can all read it together. Kofi. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll find a way to write the enzyme down there so that you guys can actually follow if you don't see this. Okay. Kofi. Ne ama ji besuane enyunu. Please don't freak out. <laughs> don't freak out. As I said earlier, if you're learning a language for the first time, it might sound like gibberish. But trust me, I'm going to make this very simple for you guys to understand. So bear with me for now. Kofi ne ama ji besuane enyunu. Right? So let's take this one by one. Kofi is simply a name of a boy. In Ghana, a boy is called Kofi, right? And Ama is a girl. So I'm guessing this is Kofi and this is Ama. Right? It's very simple. Very, very simple. Kofi, ne Ama. Ne simply means end. But the, this ne has two e. N e e. Right? If you do speak tree, kofi ne ama will be a very simple statement for you to understand because in tree they say kofi ene ama, right? But in enzima we don't say ene, you just say ne, right? So kofi ne ama. Oh, you see, it's very simple. Now we are moving on to the next word and g, g, g. G simply means stand, stand, to stand, G. In Chi, you say Jina, but in Zima, you don't add a Na, you just say Chi, right? I'm not, I'm not teaching Chi, <laughs> but if you do speak Chi, it will be simple for you, right? So, G means to stand. Besua, Besua, Be, Be means there. Swa means a house. 
Be means dia. Swa means house. Ni, ni. You see, we are having another ni here, but this ni means in. <laughs> the first ni is double e. The second ni is one. The ni means in. Enyunu. E anyunu. Anyunu. Anyunu in Nzima means front. Front. Right? Front. So we'll just go over this and I'll just let you know the translation so you can actually tell what we're about to say. Kofi ne ama. Kofi and ama. G stand. Be dia swa. House. Ne in. Anyunu. In front. Right? So if I'm to translate this directly to English, I would say Kofi and Amma stand in front of their house, which makes no sense, <laughs> right? But you know that is that is how the Enzima is. If I should translate it in a way that makes sense in English, I'll say Kofi and Amma are standing in front of their house, right? So Kofi ne Amma di beswane enyunu right it simply goes to tell you that in Nzima we don't really take the verbs and you know all those things we don't really take the verbs adjectives and all those things too seriously like we do in english like the are are doing those things we don't take it too seriously in Nzima right in fact we don't take it too seriously in a lot of Ghanaian languages it's mostly english right so the next one the next line here is Sua. We already know Sua means house. Ne in. Le. L E means de, just like in French. <laughs> right? So if you speak French, le actually makes sense to you. Kelema. Kelema. Kelema means beautiful. Right? So in Nizema, Kelema means beautiful. So Sua. Ne le. Kelema. Hold up, hold up. Disclaimer <laughs> before somebody comes to drag me. A typical enzima would read this as sua nele klema. Sua nele klema, right? But because I'm trying to teach, that is why I take the words one by one. I'm just only trying to make it easier for people who are new to the enzima language. So narrowly, an enzima will say sua nele klema. But because I'm taking it one by one, that's why I say sua nele kelema. Okay, so I had to adjust that. Thank you very much. Sua nele kelema. So even if you don't take anything out of this, kelema should be something that you can actually use. And as my friend, you can just say, hey, today you're looking kelema. You know, don't give a point. <laughs> you're looking beautiful, right? So sua nele kelema. The house is beautiful, but if I should translate it directly to English, I'll say house in the beautiful. House in the beautiful. But if I should make it make sense, I'll say the house, the house is beautiful, right? So the Inzma language doesn't really take certain verbs, adjectives, and things from English. We just it is what it is. <laughs> right? So we'll take this last statement and that will be it for today, right? So I'll say, so the last statement is, to la bie biche suane. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't freak out. I know, I know, I know it sounds like too much, but trust me, if you go over this video again, you realize that it's actually very simple, right? To la bie biche suane. Tola means a garden. Tola. Tola. Or Tola means a garden. So even if you don't remember anything from this video, you know Klema. You know Tola. You know Sua. Sua. House. You know Klema. Beautiful. And you know Tola. Garden. I mean, that's enough for you to get going. <laughs> Tola be a bitch swane. Be means um some like something like some biche beside sua house ne in 
right? So if I'm to translate this directly, I'll say a garden, no, garden some beside house in. Garden some beside house in. Do you understand what they're trying to say? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Garden some beside house in. But of course, if I'm to make it make sense, I'll say there's a garden beside the house. Right? But of course, I already said in Izuma, they don't take certain verbs, adjectives, and things from English. Right? In fact, most Ghanaian um, languages do not. We have our own way of understanding what we are saying. Right? So that's it for today right oh if you didn't really understand anything that i said today don't worry don't worry i'll be making more videos and i'll even engage you guys in conversations and things like that so that in zuma language will be at your fingertips <laughs> thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in a different video Mwah. bye